Welcome to the University of Nottingham and its Department of Theology and Religious Studies to another video in the Why Study series. With me today I have Professor Henri Gaget, who is the Professor of Fundamental Theology in the Institut Catholique in Paris, and through the Erasmus scheme is a visiting professor here in Nottingham. Welcome Henri. Hello. And Henri is an expert in the thought of the great German exegete and theologian Rudolf Bultmann and is going to try and answer the question, why study Rudolf Bultmann? I studied Bultmann uh, almost 25 years ago when, because I'm, it, it, he was a topic of my doctoral dissertation. And the reason why I chose him was, at that time, he was for me the most provocative thinker and I knew I had to think what Christian faith is accepting to be questioned by Bultmann even though I, I am not sure I will give all the answers Bultmann gave. You know? And for me he was a, a challenge. Bultmann was, was a very challenging man Many people avoided to discuss with him because he was too challenging, and I thought I had to enter the challenge. Just before we go any further, can you just tell us a little bit about the life of Rudolf Bultmann? Because many people will have heard the name, they'll have seen it in footnotes, but... Bultmann was a very quiet university person. Mm -hmm. he, he passed his doctorate of theology, he went back to Marburg and he never left Marburg. He was a quite pious man, preaching very often in the Protestant Lutheran chapel of the university. In fact, he insisted that if you were going to teach theology, you should be preaching on a Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. And he preached, even though he was not an ordinary pastor. And to some extent, he was a quiet man. Now, you said that he was the most challenging thinker. Can you tell us why you think, what, what challenges did Bultmann pose? He was a very challenging thinker for me. Okay. And I had to, to enter this challenge, to face this challenge. And I think about the quest for historical Jesus. Bultmann is quite mistreated or dismissed by many people. But when I did my doctoral dissertation on him, I discovered that the more people were approaching Bultmann positions, the more they pretended to take distance from him. Okay. Okay. So, for for Bul Bultmann, has had a great and very interesting position in the debate of its t his time, because at that time many people wanted to continue an unquestioned unquestioned dogmatical. Christology, without taking seriously the question came from history. And on the other hand, you had people who took for granted some historical assumptions so that they, they came to a new definition of Christology, what was totally unacceptable from a, a Christian point of view. And so Bultmann did the job to check what we are able to say about Jesus. Mm -hmm and how we can really understand that when the church confesses Jesus as the Christ, it is taking seriously what Jesus as a preacher of the gospel and of the kingdom of God was, uh, had already been. You know? the, the issue is people wanted to, to, to make a choice between the past preacher of the gospel who was a perfect nice man, the cool guy, Mm -hmm. telling us what we, we want to, to listen to, or a dogmatic Christ, saviour, pre-existent entity, without being able to, to, to make a link between both. And Bultmann was very interesting because he gave the first tools that helped to recreate the true link between 
Jesus the preacher of the gospel and the Christ preached by the church. Okay, what are those tools? That he gave those us? tools are a very interesting interpretation of the eschatological, apost uh, apocalyptical preaching of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Bultmann said, Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom, but the kingdom was not a, a Sunday, a, a pleasant uh, sunny day of holidays, but the, the coming of the gospel is a time for judgment, mm -hmm. where God is requiring you. And Jesus announced as a future event the judgment of God, but in fact, in his preaching, he was now making happen the judgment of God. And so Jesus was a sacrament of the gospel of the kingdom because in the encounter of the very provocative preaching of Jesus, people were facing the coming of the kingdom in their life. So when I encounter Jesus, I encounter right now in my life situation the kingdom. I encountered because it was what happened to the past listeners of Jesus. And it is precisely the question, how can we nowadays, to 2,000 years ago, uh, after... 2,000 years later. Yeah, yeah. later. Ca how can we listen to Jesus and face him, teaching us what is the kingdom and creating the situation of the kingdom f and of the judgment of God right now for us? And for Bultmann, it's only the Eastern face that can provoke people to listen to Jesus right now still. And the point of Bultmann is to say, Jesus preached with great authority. As we, we can say in, in the Gospel, not as Pharisees and scribes, Jesus told with high authority, as the man who comes from God, as the man who is enabled to speak from God at the uh, last days. And so, for Bultmann, Jesus' preaching implied a Christology. Okay. He, pray, he preached with great authority, and when he died, apparently his authority claim was, uh, was reduced to nothing, but the Eastern faith proclaims Jesus is still now the one who preached the, for the sake of God the Father. This phrase, Easter faith, yeah. it's, a, it's a tremendously, uh, two words, but it contains a, a vast amount. Can you tease out for me the, word, the words Easter faith? The, the word Easter faith is a faith that is, uh, was born after Easter, uh, Eastern appearances of Christ. It is the faith in the risen Lord, risen Lord. Risen Lord. Bultmann, there's, the, the, there's two Bultmanns. Yeah. There's the Bultmann that's known by New Testament scholars, the history of the synoptic tradition, the exegesis of John, that's the, that's the Bultmann who's the technical New Testament scholar. There's another Bultmann, the Bultmann of Kerygma and Myth, who's known by theologians. Yeah. Can you say something about these two Bultmanns? First of all, I came to discover, I, I was much more interested in the Bultmann of the theology of the New Testament, of uh, the Jesus he published in 26 and so on, the exeget than in the systematician. Okay. Because I think as an exeget, Bultmann said powerful things, made powerful points, very enlightening, even though after him people have been in progress and changed many things, but he really gave a, a starting point. Mm. The Bultmann, the Heideggerian Bultmann, speaking about myth and self-compreension, uh, self seemed to me poor, less interesting 
you know? Okay. Because, you know, it's quite, it's quite, it's too simple something. And his anthropology is not v very uh, thick. When you and I were students, I was trained in the New Testament by a, by a man who did his doctorate who was doing his doctorate with Rudolf Bultmann, but was interrupted by the Second World War. So when I was, when I was, from the time I was 19 years old, I was encountering the thought of Bultmann. And I felt he was almost someone I almost knew. If you're a student today, if you want to recommend one book to introduce the thought of Bultmann, what would it be? His Jesus. Okay. I did it once. A Korean student, clever guy. And he, he was thinking how about what it is to be obedient to God. Okay. And I told him, read Bultmann's Jesus. And he read it. And he was fully convinced about many important things concerning the obedience to God. Henri, it's been a great pleasure to have you here in Nottingham and to talk to you about Rudolf Bultmann. I hope that you have found this video a help, that it's whetted your appetite to do more study and to take up some of the questions that we have been discussing and indeed that Rudolf Bultmann spent much of his life discussing. And so from the Department of Theology and Religious Studies here in the University of Nottingham, goodbye and thank you.